So let's take a look at the retopology brush and all of its base functionality and features. Now I'm gonna open up this tiger statue here that I was working on. And I'm gonna go to my brush palette over here on the left hand side. And under the topology brush folder, you'll find the retopology brush. And once I open that up, in order to start retopologizing with this brush, first thing to keep in mind is that we currently have an assortment of subtools. And this brush is gonna work across all these subtools. So there's one way where you can start retopologizing, which is just by tapping the surface. And ZBrush is gonna ask you, hey, do you wanna create a new retopology mesh? And what this is gonna do is actually create a new subtool that is just your retopologized mesh. If you click no, it's gonna convert the current one. So let's say you have a Z remeshed model on top of your sculpt that you just wanna tweak using this brush then you would click no, and it would convert that into a retopo mesh. In our case, we wanna create a brand new one. So I'm gonna click yes to create a new retopo subtool. And now if you check on your subtool stack, you can see that we have this retopo underscore one subtool, which we'll be working on. And in order to actually start generating the geometry, number one, you can see this works with symmetry. And you can start just by tapping on the surface to create these points, these temporary points. And then by holding spacebar, we can both tap on the surface to generate that topology or click and drag to generate all of them in one go. So if I undo that, holding spacebar, I can do this and we have an edge loop over there. Now, the other thing that we have to note, and we're going to go deeper into this on the next video, is that as you can see that by pressing spacebar, my draw size changes. And this is because if I have a lower draw size while I'm holding my space bar, and you can do this on the iPad just by rolling your Apple Pencil Pro on your draw size while holding the space bar. And if I go too small, you can see that now it doesn't generate topology because the draw size is not big enough to cover that polygon. So I can go over again, and you can see if my draw size is not that big, but I can still cover part of those points. I am able to actually generate triangles on that surface. Now, the other thing that we need to note is that we have the ability to extrude edges and points. In order to extrude an edge, so if you just tap and move, you can see I'm just moving that edge and moving that point. And if I have a bigger draw size, I'm actually moving multiple points and multiple edges and snapping to the surface and doing it symmetrically. Now, in order to extrude, I have to alt alt and then just click and drag and I'm, now I'm extruding. Without letting go of my Apple Pencil Pro, I can let go of alt and press control. And as I drag left to right, I'm changing the amount of edge loops that that extrusion is gonna have. And if I drag up and down, it's gonna change the amount of edges that are gonna get extruded out. So if I drag up once or twice actually, I have the ability to extrude two edges and then maybe drag it all the way to the right and then let go of control all of this while my Apple Pencil Pro is still engaged with the screen. Now, the moment I let go of this, you can see now I've generated that topology and it's actually snapping to the surface or trying to, obviously we don't have enough topology for that, for this particular area of the model. But the cool thing is that we can do this and we can extrude points. So if I go over here, for example, and I hold Alt and then I extrude out a point, I'm extruding out a quad. Now, there's another way you can go about this. Let me Control Z that. And holding Alt and extruding out a point. And while my Apple Pencil Pro is engaged with the surface, I can let go of Alt and now I have two triangles. Now, the neat thing about this is that if I do the same thing to the next point, and let go of Alt, it's gonna convert that middle polygon to a quad. So before, if I did this, it's gonna create a quad, right? And we're gonna retain those two triangles. But if I do that and let go of Alt, you can see we would assume we would get two triangles in the middle, but ZBrush just detects that those two triangles could be part of the same quad and generates a quad. So I can go around that mesh doing this, just converting and creating an edge loop around our mesh just to create a particular edge flow, right? Where we would have the ability to now insert an edge loop around that model, around that mesh. Now, whenever I'm generating new points, 
if I want to delete those, I can hold Alt and delete one by one. Or I can just do like we always do with Dynamash, just control and drag outside and it's going to delete all of those points. In order to delete actual geometry, we can hold Alt inside of the model. When I'm hovering over inside of our retopologized model, holding Alt and dragging this red line is going to delete those edge loops. Now, another thing that we can keep in mind is how to add edge loops after the fact. So before, when we were extruding, because this polygon is colored blue, it tells me that it's still a temporary polygon, meaning that in order to add edge loops, I would still have to keep the Apple Pencil Pro engaged and then decide how many edge loops and then let go. Now, the moment that this is actual geometry, there's a way we can add topology by holding spacebar and clicking and dragging on that surface. Now, the moment I let go of Spacebar, while my Apple Pencil Pro is still engaged with that edge, I can drag left and right to add multiple spans and then let go. And now this is actual geometry. So I can do that again, hold Spacebar, click and drag on any edge. And then as I let go of Spacebar, I can do this and then press Spacebar again to go back to moving a single edge loop and then let go and when I feel like I have the required topology or where it needs to sit.